everyone, Kay here on the homestead in Tennessee. And now it is August the 2nd and there are harvests coming in. And so you can just kind of shift the emphasis on building the garden and now you've got to bring in the harvest and get things preserved. So that's where the focus is. And today we're going to talk about tomatoes. And I just wanted to share with you my second tomato harvest. Now, I want to do a taste test soon, but I'd like to get more varieties and more specimens to choose from. These are some of the same varieties I grew last year. And I'm going to have to look and check the names because a lot of the tags got misplaced. I'm going to have to check my tomato packages, but I've got a cherry tomato, and then I've got these pear-shaped tomatoes. They're kind of tough, so they do better against diseases and bugs than uh, some of the other tomatoes that I have. But they split, and we had so much rain, I've had so many problems with splitting. And when tomatoes split, then it opens the skin for bacteria, and bugs and all of that. So, I mean, none of these are perfect, but they look a lot better than <laughs> the first harvest that I brought in, especially something like this. You know, this is a great specimen, and it's more of a little tougher skin, so that helps protect it, but then it's not as delicious. So, I've got a Garyosena. I've been growing that since I started, first started my garden. Someone gave me the seeds and I've been saving the seeds every year. And this is a White Beauty. White Beauty is very easy to forget about in your garden if you're growing a lot of varieties because there it is ripening and you think, oh, that's just another tomato and you're waiting for it to turn red and all of that and it never does. <laughs> it turns yellowish white and you have to remember to get it because it has a very short window of being perfect and then it rots. So there were two on the plant, one was rotted, just mush, and this one was okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Um, I don't know what these are. I think they're Amish paste tomatoes, but I'm not sure. They're not very red and that could also have something to do with the fact that we had so much rain there and it, it not only, it seems to me anyway, this, this may not be correct, but it seems to kind of water down the brilliance of the red as well as cause a lot of splitting. And this is my only big yellow tomato. It's a more, it actually makes more of a lump. So I'll go over all these varieties, I'll look them up and figure it all out, but I just wanted to share this with you. And also, all of these tomatoes came off of my two tomato terraces, and my young helper has worked very hard to help me. We're doing the no-till, wood chip, and cardboard method on the tomato terraces. And the way they're designed and everything, it's, it would be very hard to get the tiller in there now. It was tilled originally when, when they were developed last spring, but not since we put down cardboard and wood chips last year. So we just finished pulling all the weeds around and cleaning up the edges and putting on a, another layer of cardboard plus uh, two to three inches more of very broken down wood chips. I mean, almost in some cases, soil. So that's all the situation down there. That's hopefully all I'm going to have to do. I do need to spray them because the stink bugs are bad and I got a couple of caterpillars off of one plant and so it's any day now the hornworm caterpillars are going to show up. And so I was going to spray today and by the time we I got the harvest done and we did the wood chips and everything it was blasting sun very hot so really too hot to start spraying plants so 
of course I have 23 or 24, one of them died I think. Started out I think with 25, so maybe I'm down to 24 plants. I'm down on the lower garden along the cattle panel trellis and um, I managed to get one side, the actual, the actual opposite side from where I planted the tomatoes. I got that side and some of the tomatoes grew through the cattle panel obviously. So I got all those branches put up and then I never got the important side done. So they're just all just coming out like right into the sweet potatoes and everything. But they're too bushy now to get them up against the cattle panel. So I'm just going to have to take what I get. Um, I think I could have put 15 plants. If I had known they were going to do well, I would have only put 15 plants down there. Tomatoes like sun, and I'm seeing that everything down in the sun in the lower garden is doing extremely well, whereas the tomatoes on the tomato terraces are doing less well. And I put another round of tomato fertilizer organic with compost, kind of packed it around the base of each plant. I watered that in today with some fish fertilizer, hoping it gives them a little bit more life to get me through August and into September. We will see. So I'd like to know from you, what should I do with all of these tomatoes? Because last year I canned tomatoes. By the time I started canning last year, I had to go to the Amish food stand and buy a big box of tomatoes. I didn't have enough last year. And so there's a lot of different kinds of varieties here. Um, I'm happy to just, just eat them fresh, but I won't be able to get them all eaten before. And of course I can give some away, but they're not perfect. And I can't sell them because they're not perfect. You know, I mean, people expect to buy tomatoes that are perfect, and these aren't. So, I mean, I could maybe put one or two boxes together, but that's not enough to set up a sign out front and put a table down there and everything. So, you know, if I thought I was going to have 50 more harvests like this, I would definitely try to sell some tomatoes. <laughs> But the rain has backed off a little bit, and I, my heart goes out to everybody oh, in eastern Kentucky. It's just been horrible, and I know people are raising money for the people of eastern Kentucky, and I would love to do that uh, somehow. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to do something like that, fundraiser. But in terms of the weather here, it's gotten a little warmer. The plants are responding. But, you know, without two, we two weeks of without rain, and they're going to be not happy again. So, as far as I know, my cistern is holding at ground level. Um, I didn't check it today, but I'm hoping. And that means that there's at least 5,000 gallons in there. And that should get me through the end of the season, I hope. So the heirloom peas that my uncle gave me, the seeds, are doing fantastic and it's time to be going down every day and harvesting peas. So I've got to get into that routine. I harvested eight really kind of ugly cabbages, but I felt like there was material inside the cabbage that hadn't been eaten on and, and was still good. And I made six quarts of cabbage slaw fermented and I've had some issues with my fermented pickles. You may have seen that picture on my community page. So I'm still trying to get things uh, situated and, and kind of learn even though it says an inch and a half of water. What does that really mean? Is the food above that? Because the food shrinks down and then that weight which is the size of the opening on the jar sinks down and then you go, well, wait a minute. <laughs> um, then everything can go around it if it sinks down. So there, I still have to get used to it. I still have to um, keep practicing it until I really get it down. You know, you have to see it. You have to feel it. You have to just know how to do stuff. I taught myself how to sew, to crochet, to knit, and 
doggone it, I'm going to teach myself how to ferment. So, <laughs> and I've got a lot of help online. So anyway, thank you so much for being a part of my journey here on the homestead to become a sustainable uh, place to be and to live. And I hope you guys are stocking up, uh, seeing what's going on in the world, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm Kay, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.